Hi guys, in lesson two of this little series for facial tracking in Nuke and Maya, what we're going to do is we are going to um, do the manual tracking um, because we're going to do a mixture of manual and auto tracking and we're going to do the manual tracking within this. Okay. In the last lesson, I was saying that I may have written out the color correct um, the color correct piece of footage, um, but I didn't end up doing it purely because if if I want to if I want to use the color correct node f um, with my footage, it's not going to be too intensive on my processor just to kind of have it in the stream rather than write it out. Whereas with the D noise, I did want to write that out because and the high pass because you know it can be more processor intensive. So like I said, we're going to do the manual tracks on this face, and for for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the red channel. For that because I think even looking at just the normal color channel there is contrast there but looking at the red channel it's, it's, it's basically black on nearly close to white or, or, or light gray and there's just so much contrast in there it makes sense all right um, so I'm gonna come through and yeah when I look at all the channels it's gonna be that one even over RGB to be honest so it's the red channel filtered into the red green and blue okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new tracker node and just put this, slide this in here. And let's come to where the face is facing forward. Well, like that. Um, let's add a track and I'm gonna start with this one by here. The reason I'm starting with this one is I'm not gonna do all of them on camera because that's just gonna take far too long. Um, but this one is gonna go out of range because he turns his head to the left and I'm gonna show you how we manage and cope with that, okay? So I'm just gonna bring in my uh, inner region and then this outer region is where it's going to search for it so I'm just going to make that a little bit wider than it is tall because it's more left to right motion within this so that should be fine come across to the settings there's minor luminance changes in here but because there's because there's simply minor luminance changes I'm still gonna click adjust for luminance changes and that can help I'm gonna come down into the auto tracking and I'm going to change my warp type to translate, rotate, and scale because there's translate, rotate, and possibly a little bit of scale in there. Um, the pattern grab behavior, um, I'm going to say if the error is above 0 0.001, that's going to grab it all the time. So I'm going to pull this to about 0.0.01, 0 0 but there. So yeah, 0 0.0. 1 instead of 0 0.001. Yeah, cool. Um, so actually increase increase that to 0 0.1. So if the error is above 0 0.1, then it's going to re-grab the pattern. Okay, so what we're going to do is I've got all that set up the way I want it. You can bring the resolution down if you want. Basically, if we hover over, um, it'll basically grab the pattern again more often if you bring this down. So you can, you can bring that down if you want to help. It depends. If you're having trouble, try it. If not, leave it where it was. You know, it's totally up to you. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to my tracker and I'm going to give it a go of tracking forward and see how far I get with this. So just click the track forward button. Seems to be sticking relatively well. And it's going to come to a point. Yeah, it's, it's lost it there. Okay. So we can turn our traffic lights on just to see that. So we're going to come to a point, come through, and it stuck on it until about here, I'd say. It's good until about here. And you can see that the keyframe stuck in error some over here. And we could try and correct the last few, but because we know why it's getting error some, it's because it's, it's, the shape is distorted. And I'm basically going to leave it from frame 248 onwards. So I'm just going to click clear forward. And there you go, I've got that little bit. And simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep moving forward in the footage until I can see it clearly again. So yeah, three, four, five, for example, what I'm going to do is make a another tracking point, um, move my search regions in, just like, oh, there you go, that was an accident, um, just like that. And again, I'm going to track forward, see how far we can keep this. And we should, yeah, keep it for the rest of the shot. I'm going to come back to frame 345, and I'm now going to track backwards just to see. Okay, yeah, round about there. So I'm going to delete probably from here backwards on this track. 
because it's going to be problematic over there. And what you can do is these little aerosome tracks by here, you can see it does between those two frames bounce around a bit. You can kind of manually come in and kind of nudge these and try and perfect them. Because I've just set a keyframe there, what you can do is you can try this key track current. I've set a keyframe on 317 and I did on 345. So if I click this, it's going to track between the two and see if it can, because it knows it's got to get from A to B. And that sometimes can help it. If you just set a little keyframe and track between the two, it goes off a bit there. So if I just move that back into the center a little bit, and it's going to retrack them between those. Okay, and that, that can sometimes give you a little bit of a better, um, better track. So for that, actual tracking point. I've used two tracks, okay, um, purely because, well, we lose it for, for a little while. And when we convert these into 3D tracking points, they should be near enough in the same place, okay? So track one and two is actually for one point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to pause it here because that is simply um, all I'm doing for this. If I run into any other kind of like real problems where I think it would be good to show you this in a tutorial, I will pause it and, uh, uh, no, sorry, I will unpause the recording and I'll talk you through that. But hopefully the rest of it should be should be fine. So I've completed my tracking now. I've actually got 18 tracking markers um, because a lot of them kind of don't go for the full thing. Like you can see this one here, it wasn't really getting good results tracking there. And some of them I had to use multiple tracking markers, like two um, because they go out of view all the time. But I've, I've got my tracks, that's, that's the good thing. You can see that um, all these points are tracked at, at some point. You know, this, this one by here, for example, isn't at this point, but it does come in. Okay, so I hope that you've found found that useful. Um, obviously, I'll see you in the next tutorial now where we're going to look at um, including some uh, auto tracks from our 3D camera tracker, and we're going to combine the two of them together to get a good solve. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video in this series.